Hey y'all, how's it going today? I thought today what we would look at is how to resolve forces into vector components, right? So usually in statics, we have a magnitude of a force and we need to resolve it into the X and Y components if we're in a 2D system. So let's go over how to do that because this confuses a lot of people when they start out in statics. And it's actually pretty easy if you know what you're looking at. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start out with a right triangle. All right. And a lot of people won't tell you this when they're teaching the class because they just assume that you know to look at this. So let's look at a right triangle. All right, so we have a right triangle, looks like this. And remember for a right triangle, we always, always have this 90 degree angle and we're gonna have an angle theta right here, okay? And then we're gonna have the hypotenuse. So let's just put HYP. And then we've got the adjacent side. So this is adjacent to this angle, so let's just put ADJ. And then this side over here is the opposite side. So let's put OPP for opposite. Now we know from Sakatoa, or at least that's how I learned it, that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so this stands for sine, this is for opposite, this is hypotenuse. And then this one tells us that cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally we have the toa part. So this is tangent, opposite adjacent. So tangent theta is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. All right. So we've all seen that a bunch of times and resolving your force into components is going to come back to this. All right. So we're going to be focusing in on the sine and cosine part. So let's draw a 2D Cartesian system. I just threw my pen across the page there. All right, so we got X and Y. So now let's draw a force. All right, so let's say we have this force right here. Let's just say it's 10. We'll make it 10 Newtons. So that's this force, and I've got this angle right here. Let's say it's 50 degrees. All right, so I have that, and I need to break this up into the X and Y components, okay? So how are we gonna do that? Well, first, let's draw a couple of things. So first, we're gonna have the X component, which is gonna be along this X axis. So we just draw our line out to here. That's FX. And then I've got the Y component. So the Y component is gonna be right here. So that's Fy. Now if we look, you can draw a little dashed line. And the dashed line just connects the end of this force to that component. And then same thing here. Okay, so if we take this now and bring it over here, and we're going to basically form a triangle, a right triangle, with these three things, right? I have Fy. I've got this magnitude here, and then I've got fx. So these three things are gonna be the sides of our right triangle, okay? So let's come over here, and whoops, let me change over the color. So this is the magnitude, this will be fx, and then right here is fy, okay? Now our angle, is 50 degrees right there. Okay, so now we've got this right triangle because this right there is 90 degrees. So now that we have this, that means this length right here is the hypotenuse, but we already know that it's 10, okay, because that's the magnitude right here. So our hypotenuse is 10 here, and then I've got Fy right here but notice that's the opposite side of the angle. And then on this one right here, the FX, what's that equal to? That's the adjacent side. Okay, so now that we have that, what we're wanting to do is essentially solve 
for fx and fy. That's what we're looking for. All right, so how do we go about doing that? All right, so let's look at fx here. Now, this is the adjacent side. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at sine and cosine. So I want the adjacent side. Well, the adjacent side is in this cosine equation, right? So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. I already know the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse was 10, right? So basically, we can write then that cosine 50 is fx, because that's the length of the adjacent side, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So we put 10. And now we just solve for fx. All right, so fx then would be 10 cosine 50. All right. And I'll write it out in vector form in just a second. We'll put the sign on there and the unit vector and all that. But that's how you're going to go about getting fx. So all you're doing is basically forming this right triangle. And then you're just going to use these basic trig functions to figure out your vector components. All right, so now let's do the same thing with Fy. So Fy is our opposite side. All right, so the opposite deals with sine right here because sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So we can say that sine 50 is equal to Fy because that's the opposite length over the hypotenuse, which is 10. All right, so Fy then, if we solve, is going to be 10 sine 50. Okay. Then from there, you can put it in vector form if you want. All right, so once you do the vector form, you got to do the, the signs. So this one is pointing in the positive x direction. So we're going to have a positive 10 cosine 50, because that's fx right there. Unit vector for i, for x axis would be i. And then for fy, we're pointing up, so that's positive. So we'll have plus 10 sine 50 j, because j is our unit vector for that positive y axis. Okay, so that would be how you would do uh, that uh, force. All right, if you're in that quadrant with this angle given to you. All right, so now let's look at another one. Let's draw another little system. And let's put it over here, quadrant two. So let's say we have this, and let's just make the magnitude 10 again, just to be consistent. And now let's put the angle here. So we'll have the angle between the positive y-axis and the four, so let's just say that's 30. All right, got that. Remember this is x, that's y. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna resolve this into its components. So let's draw out our components on this uh, coordinate system. So fx is going to be right here. Notice it's going to the left. So that tells you about the sign. And then fy, since this is pointing upward, is going to go up. So now we've got that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and draw the right triangle. Okay, so there is the hypotenuse here. So this is going to be 10. That's the hypotenuse. And then I'm going to have Fy, which is right here. All right, and then I've got to connect these together right here. So that's going to be Fx. Let's close that. All right, and now let's put our angle. So our angle is right here, so that means 30 degrees goes right there. Now notice what we did here. Fx was here, right? And now over here on the right triangle, it's moved up here. Well, that's okay because this distance here, or this length, is the same as the length right here. So all we basically did was slide this up so that we could close uh, this right here and form our right triangle. All right, so that is the 90 degree angle right there. All right, so now we have that. So if 30 degrees is right here, this side is opposite. 
and then Fy is adjacent. All right, so people get confused when they first learn this because if you notice up here, Fy was opposite and then Fx was adjacent. Here they've switched, okay? Because we have the angle given in a different location. So a lot of people just automatically say, oh, Fx has to be adjacent, but that's not the case, all right? It depends on where your angle is. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through this again. So let's start with fx first. So fx is opposite. Well, we know from up here that opposite is in the sine function. So we're gonna use sine, okay? And you might be wondering, why aren't we ever using tangent? Well, we don't know the adjacent length at this point, so we can't use this one. So we can only use this or this, and since we need opposite, that leaves us with sine, okay? So we're gonna have sine of, I was about to write theta, we're gonna have sine of 30, and then that's gonna be the opposite, which is fx, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So now what's fx gonna be? 10 sine 30. All right, and then let's do fy. So fy is adjacent, cosine deals with adjacent, so we're gonna say cosine 30 equals Fy over the hypotenuse. So Fy then is going to be 10 cosine 30. All right, and then if we write it in vector form, let's look at Fx first. So I have 10 sine 30. Now, what sign should I have? Am I going to have a positive or a negative? I'm going to have a negative, right? Because this is pointing to the left. That is the negative x direction. So I'm going to have negative 10 sine 30 i. And then for the y component, I've got 10 cosine 30. This is pointing up, so it's positive. And then the unit vector for the y-axis is j. So that would be your force vector there. All right, so let's do one more of these. We'll put it in a different quadrant. Let's see what we get. All right, let's, let's move it down here. Okay, so F is gonna be 10. Let's make that Newton's. And I don't know, let's make the angle right here. Let's say this is 60. Okay, now our Fx is gonna be going to the right since this is pointing towards the right and Fy is going to be going down since this force is going down. So now we got that. All right, so if we draw our triangle, this force magnitude is always going to be your hypotenuse. Right, so we got 10, and then I've got Fx right here. So that gives me that side of the triangle, and then Fy will close the triangle. Let's do that and close it. All right, so there is our 90 degree angle. This is 60 right here. Okay, so now we've got Fx. Now, is this the adjacent side or the opposite side? That's the adjacent side, right? And then the green one over here is Fy. And that is going to be the opposite side. All right, so now we've got that. And remember 10 here, that is the hypotenuse. So now just like we did before, you got to pick sine or cosine. So if you're dealing with the adjacent side, we're always going to use cosine. So that means we're going to have cosine 60 equals fx over 10 which gives us fx equal to 10 cosine 60. For fy, this is the opposite side of the triangle when we have this as our angle. So we're gonna have sine 60 equals fy over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So fy will then be 10 sine 60. All right, and then let's write it as a vector. So fx is pointing to the right, that's positive. So we got 
positive 10 cosine 60i, because remember i is our unit vector for that positive x-axis, and then for the y component, this is going down, so that's going to be a negative y component. So we'll have negative 10 sine 60j. So that would be your force vector for this one right here. And notice if you're using the same angle when you're finding your components, you're always going to have a sine and a cosine. So notice here we have cosine and sine. Here we have sine, cosine. And up here we had cosine, sine. All right. So if you use the same angle to find all of your components, you should get one cosine and then one that's sine. All right. So this kind of shows you the math behind how we get the components, but now you don't want to have to go through this stuff every time you're doing uh, force vectors. So it's easy to kind of look at the picture and figure out which one you need if you need sine or cosine. So here, if I just look at this picture right here and don't even worry about this triangle, I know the X component is adjacent to this angle. So I know that that's going to be a cosine. All right, and I automatically know that I'm going to take 10 cosine 60. All right, just because we already understand that that's coming from this right triangle. All right, so we take the magnitude times cosine 60, that gives us fx. And then for fy, remember this, you could slide over to here like that, and that would be the opposite side. So that means we want to use sine. So we would have 10 sine 60 to get the y component. All right, and then you find the positive or negative sine convention just like we did before. Okay, if we go back up here, our magnitude again is 10. And for the x component, I want to basically slide this up so that it's right here. This would be opposite 30. So that means we're going to use what? Sine, right? Because sine deals with opposite. So we're going to have 10 sine 30, and it's pointing to the left, so it'll be negative. The y is adjacent to that 30 degree angle, so that means cosine. So we're going to have 10 cosine 30. It's positive because it's going up. And then let's look at this last one. So for this one, fx, is that adjacent or opposite? It's adjacent, right? So since it's adjacent, we're going to use cosine. So I'm going to have 10 cosine 50. That gives me f of x. And then lastly, the y component. Remember, this length here is the same as this length. So to get the y component, we're dealing with the opposite length or the opposite side of that triangle. So we're going to use sine. So 10 sine 50 gives me fy. All right. So hopefully that kind of gives you a, an idea of how we're coming up with these vector components and why the fx and the fy switch between needing cosine and sine. All right, so it's all based on these right triangles. All right, so hopefully that helps you a little bit, and I hope you all have a great night. See you all next time.